Hello Paleans, we are back again for another Paleo update day and this one is a little bit earlier than I expected. The devs seem to have switched up their update days a little bit as some of you have may notice that this isn't the last Tuesday in the month where we have previously had most of our updates but I am not complaining, that is definitely not a complaint. I am always happy for new content and this update definitely has that. So if you're ready, let's take our monthly deep dive into the Paleo patch notes for update 0.185. Don't forget to like and also subscribe for new Paleo content, but here we go. Firstly, Plushy Trading is now live. Trading has been teased by the developers for quite a while. We first saw hints of it in a dev blog update way back when, but today's patch will finally see its introduction into the game and we get to learn a little bit more about how it will work. If you have a plushie that is ready for its new home, you will first have to complete the Trading Tips quest, which will hopefully give you a nice overview on how to trade successfully. Trading with other players will take place in live time and you'll be able to trade in the underground night market. Once in the night market, you will have to find another Paleon who is wanting to make a trade and if you match, you will then be able to swap your plushies. The trading is currently restricted to plushes and potato pods, so this is great if you have a duplicate potato or there is a particular one that has maybe evaded you so far and you need to get your hands on it. To further celebrate the plushy trading arrival, there is also a brand new emote. The come here emote should make it a little bit easier to get people's attention for when you're wanting to trade. I think the plushy trading is going to be a great little bit of fun. I don't think it's going to be something that takes up a whole lot of time, but it's going to be a nice something extra for the community and you'll be able to go and find something that maybe you haven't been able to get your hands on so far. So that's always good. The next thing is furniture and furniture is a surefire way to get me excited for a new update and the developers have spoiled us with this latest set. This is the camping decor set and this set features 20 rustic wood inspired pieces which will be perfect for creating a cozy outdoor space. We've already seen a sneak peek at these items in the teaser trailer and they include a brand new fencing which has a birch effect. Fencing is definitely something that we always want more of so this is great. There is a matching log furniture collection which includes a stool, bench and a table. There is also a new birch effect bookshelf, a collection of new wall items which include picture frames, a shelf and a hanging candle. There are also some nice smaller table pieces which include a log planter and a flower which looks very similar to a thistle. There is also a log candle which is pretty cute. But the cutest item of all of them is probably this adorable chapa wood carving. It is very precious. To get your hands on this recipe set, if you're a new player, you will have to have placed your first tent on your home plot. If you are an older player, like me, you will automatically receive the starter recipes, so you, all you have to do is go ahead to your DIY workbench and get crafting. I love this furniture set and is perfect for the autumn season. I cannot wait to see what cute builds are created with this. Some of you eagle-eyed players may have also noticed this snail plush that was featured in the trailer. There's no mention of this in the patch notes, so I'm going to try catching myself some of these snails later and see what happens. Who knows, maybe they are surprising us. The new decorating opportunities don't stop there. We also have the ability to change our plot terrains, maybe even elevate them with the brand new yard work decor set. This brand new set will include everything you need to add some flair to your plot landscape, including new terraces, rocks, logs, and pillars. We did also get a sneak peek at this in the teaser trailer, and it does look like the new trellises will form platforms that may be able to be joined together to create a whole elevated areas which is pretty cool it also does look like there is a few rocks around which is something that we see out in the world and maybe incorporate them into our plots as just a little bit of an extra decor piece there is also fallen logs that we have seen which is really nice and something that i think we have been asking for for a very long time there is also these pillars which come in stone and wood these may seem familiar because they are out in the world particularly in Kilima and I'm very interested to see the mechanics of these and see if we can stack them on top of each other. These pieces will be purchasable from the brand new Yardwork store, which will be located in City Hall. To buy these items and unlock the Yardwork store, you will first of all have to unlock all of your available plot writs. So what this means is you'll have to have expanded your plot to the maximum size. If you haven't done that, 
get doing that straight away because you need to get your hands on these pieces ASAP. Okay, next up it's time to talk about a few game improvements and quality of life updates. Firstly, there has been ongoing issues with the discoverability of plots on the home tour board. It is a frequent issue that those featuring on the trending board are those that are often first to upload their plots, which isn't great if you're in bad time zones like Europe. I think quite a bit of feedback has been given to the devs about this and they finally decided to implement a feature whereby players will now be able to spend their home tour tickets to feature their home plot during a housing tour event. Now, I will be honest, I think that there could have been a lot better fixes that could have been done to fix this issue, so I'm not the biggest fan of this idea as my main concern is that if a number of people pay the tickets to feature their plot, it will just become really saturated. So I'm intrigued to see how it works in practice, and who knows, I could be very wrong, this could be great. I would have honestly preferred if the devs had either just scrapped the trending page or moved the random tours to the front page so that trending plots aren't the ones that people see first and then they just cycle through them religiously when they're doing visits but each to their own hopefully this will kind of make things a little bit better and not put people off wanting to participate and hopefully maybe we'll see even more improvements on this in the future fingers crossed there has also been some small adjustments to the sell items at stores in Kilimer Village as from now any item can now be sold in Zeki's general store and also in the underground black market. A small change to the premium shop will also make it a little bit easier to see what items you have already bought as those you have purchased will now drop to the bottom of the store after being bought. The Magic Market is also back again this month and it will be opening on Tuesday the 5th for one week. It doesn't look like we are going to see any major changes but there is one small change which appears to come as a direct result of feedback. Previously the Popper Chapa would begin at 8pm in game time and this would cause a long wait before the Chapa Chase started at midnight. After today's update, the Popper Chapa event will now begin at 10pm in game time. This will significantly reduce the time you are standing around waiting for, for all of the fun activities. I think this is a positive one and it definitely means that I'm going to have more time on my plot or out in the world before heading to the, the Magi Market just to get all of those tickets and things. So I'm not mad about this one. Could they do more? Maybe. Potato pods are also back again this month with two rounds. To be eligible for the first pod, you will need to log in between 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 23rd of October and 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 5th of November. To get the second potato, you will need to log in between 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 6th of November and the 18th of November at 10 a.m. Pacific time also. May the potato pods be in your favor and hopefully no duplicates coming your way. There has been some bug fixes this month and some of them do relate to the Magic Market but not all of them. There is an overall memory leak issue that has apparently caused some issues and that should now be fixed so hopefully those of you that were struggling with that there might be some more stability from that sort of side of things. But the Magic Market they have made some small improvements there so hopefully this time around it will be a bit smoother. The other main one that I think kind of confused a few players were missing ramps and stairs around Bahari Bay those have also now been fixed as well so hopefully you have a little bit of an easier time getting around Bahari but as I say definitely go and check out the full list see if there's something in there that was bothering you that has now been fixed so now it's time to have a look at what's going to be available in the premium store. First off, we will have two outfits. These are the ones that were teased in the trailer. They are the Veil Hunter outfit, which comes with a hat, top and bottom for 1,700 Paleo coins and the Spectral Vow outfit, which kind of has like a zombie-ish bride to it, which I quite like. And that consists of a hat and a whole outfit kind of piece. And this is 2,750. This one does seem to come with a special flower animation which is pretty cool and then there is some tool skins as well this is an axe and a bow tool skin set which is 850 paleo coins and if you line this up perfectly you will kind of get an uh, effect when you shoot something which is pretty cool we haven't seen that yet i don't think there is also a special veil hunter glider for 425 paleo coins which is pretty cool it has that erythral kind of effect to it as well a new thing that is coming to the shop is skins. So this allows you to change the actual color of your skin. And there's four different colors, including a zombie, silver screen, powdered, and bridal blue. And you can adjust this 
and this is just wild. This is perfect for Halloween. If you want to change your skin color, this is 2,750 Paleo coins. And there are also some new masks coming. These kind of have a Magi kind of inspired. The first one is a dragon one, which is 666 Paleo coins. And also the Phoenix inspired Ember mask, which is 425. We've seen it everywhere and yes there is a new pet coming. This is a ferret kind of inspired pet but it is called the Ferris. It is a few different available options for this one. The Snowy, the Banded and the Sable. Each of them are 1,275. And also teased at the teaser trailer is the Autumn Acres Landscape. This one is available now for 850 Paleo coins and it looks beautiful. I love the way this looks. This is definitely coming home with me. And also to celebrate the change of seasons, they are celebrating with a special bundle, which consists of the Autumn Secure Outfit for 1,020 Paleo Coins, and also the Vampiric Bundle, which is 50% off at 1,700 Paleo Coins. So if you're looking for a Halloween costume, maybe this one will tickle your fancy. The second wave of premium store items will be coming on November 5th and this will consist of the jazzy dress which is a hat top and bottom and this is available for 1,275 coins or 2,550 for the full set. There is also an intercellar tool skin which will be available for your full tool set for 850 coins. So there we have it, that is everything coming in Paleo Update 0.185 Full Flourishes. Let me know what you're most excited for and I'll see you in the game later on. Have a great rest of your day, bye bye!